What's cracking, everybody? New video. I think it was about um, two or three nights ago. I was doing a live. Um, I've been doing more lives lately. Um, but I was doing a live and um, somebody gave me a, 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 a big super chat. I think, was, I think it was a $50 super chat. Thank you. Um, and he, he requested a topic. And that's what this video is going to be about. I told him that I would. I'm a man of my word. And here we are. And, you know, <clears throat> so this video is going to be about God, what I've seen, maybe what I believe. I don't know. I don't write stuff down. I just freestyle with you guys, interact with you guys, chop it up. <clears throat> but isn't it a trip before I even get into it? Isn't it a trip how taboo religion is you know for people that come from the street lifestyle and how allegedly how taboo it is is how, what i should be saying and you know the penitentiary stuff you know allegedly it's a very taboo subject and that's why i don't mind talking about it i'm actually gonna push the push uh post this video tonight as soon as i finish with this <clears throat> i'm gonna just put it out there um, before I do, I think I forgot to say something. No video. If I forgot, there it is. <clears throat> but um, I have kind of a trippy story, and I'll try to save it, you know, towards the end. But I want to say this: <clears throat> in all my years in prison, right? It was never a surprise to me. Like, first of all, I've, I've said this before on my lives. I think I may have said it in videos, but I'll say it now to clarify for people. So people get an understanding of um, my situation, right? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So I do identify myself as a Christian. However, I do not hold myself to anyone else's understanding of what Christians are, what they should be and how they should conduct themselves. To me, if you know the Bible, to me, that is how the Pharisees conduct themselves. Um, judging other people, oh, he's not Christian enough, he's not doing this right, he's not doing, save that, you know, keep that in the churches because to me, not all, but a lot of church Christians, that's how they conduct themselves. Um, <clears throat> That's how they conduct themselves towards others. It's very judgmental. And I'm not with that. I truly feel in my heart that whatever you do, as long as you do it um, without evil intent, then it's not a sin. And that doesn't mean, you know, you can go steal from people and this and that, you know, and, 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 and connive and work people. And it's not a sin because you have no heart. That's those are those are two different things. Right. But. I've always taken religion seriously, even when I was like the most knuckleheaded phase of my life, right? I always respected it. It was something that I, I believed you'd never play with. Um, and so um, I want to say that I had a few sallies, you know, guys that were, you know, tough guys on the yard, you know, people looked at them, you know, they had already earned their respect, you know, in prison, in life in general, but especially in prison, a man's reputation will always precede him. So people will know who you are before you even got there. People all, oh, hey, homeboy's coming. He's getting transferred from here. Hey, he's feeding him. Make sure he, you know, he gets this or he has that. And this, you know, that's how it is, right? And I've had sellies like that. And they, well, a few of them would make it a point every morning after their workout and their bird bath to get 30 minutes in of the Bible. <clears throat> um, and nobody looks twice. I think those that look twice at something like that or think, well, that, what kind of bottle is that? That says more about you than that individual. Um, <clears throat> You know, the, the the earth is the devil's playground, right? In my belief system. And prisons are where he really, really 
um, tries to have the most fun. And so when you see uh, people that understand that, then they know, like, no matter what, you know, if they have to kill their Sally, if they have to go to yard and do whatever they got to do, um, they still have their personal relationship with God. And that's important, a personal relationship, not me worrying about somebody else's relationship. It's not in my business, right? And um, I, I told the story once. <clears throat> there was a guy, big dude, man, big old. He was from Sanger, right? And um, he was a lightweight bully, but not with Rasa. Rasa can't bully Rasa, right? But he would try to bully, like, he would try to bully the white dudes, you know, he would push the limit as far as he could to try to get stuff from them for free. And, you know, it did it work. He was a big dude, right? And um, he was intimidating to, to a lot of people. And I was a little dude, man. You know, when I came in the system and for whatever reason, he took a liking to me. He was like, hey, homie, I'm your bodyguard, this and that. I got you. And I was like, yeah, come, come, come on, come on. All right, all right. Um, but for whatever reason, we always got along very well. <clears throat> I saw this dude years later, man. I mean, what was it? Probably, shit, 15 years later, man. I was walking by and I seen this dude, right? And it was a big dude. So, you know, you always, you know, scan in the yard. I looked and I saw him and I was like, I think I know that dude. It was the same guy. But yet something was different that made me think something's not right. Who is this Vato? And I remember I looked at him and I was like, holy shit. And I saw his eyes, right? And as soon as I saw his eyes, when I know this dude, you know, for a few years, when I first started my time, we got along real good. We hung out on a daily basis. And when I saw his eyes, immediately two things popped in my head. Either he went crazy or he's a righteous Christian. So I walked over to him. Hey, homeboy, you know, but I said his name, hey, homeboy. and he looked like, and I was like, sorry about that, man. Oh, scam likely calls right now. I hung up, he called back. I hung up, he called back. Anyways, that's weird, right? Telling this type of story and then I, scammers don't call back multiple times like that. Anyways, um. So like I said, I was like, hey, and he looked at me and I was like, hey, and he was like, oh, hey, how are you doing? This and that. And I, and I asked him, I said, hey, are you Christian now? And he goes, yeah, I am, as a matter of fact. And I told him, yeah, it was your eyes. I knew it. I said, either this bottle's crazy or he's Christian. He said, I ain't crazy. And, you know, when you see people in prison, those of you that have been in prison, and you've been in those, you know, those level four 180s and you've been in the shoes and you've been around dudes who believe they're never going to get out of prison, who have settled in. Not just physically, but mentally and emotionally. You see their eyes are usually dead. There's nothing in them. You know, and um, that's the eyes that he had prior to me seeing him again. There was light in his eyes. That's why I said either he's crazy or he's Christian. Okay. Now, having said that, I remember being in juvenile hall and I was fighting a bunch of damn cases, man. A bunch of them. I was on my way to YA. I just, I needed to finish these cases. I had to go to trial on an attempted murder. And um, there was this dude from the east side. Mondo, right? And he had a bunch of cases, man. But he's from a he's from a well known family out there in SB. And the judge told him, like, I sent your dad to prison. I sent your uncles to prison. I don't want to send you. No, he said I sent them all to Hawaii. He said I don't want to send you to Hawaii. This dude was supposed to go away. And instead, he told him, You're gonna wash every one of the police cars. Another phone call. Wow. 
He said, you're gonna go to the Santa Barbara Police Department, you're gonna watch every one of their cop cars. He goes, and when you're done with that, you're gonna go to the Sheriff's Department. He, he goes, you're gonna watch every one of their cars. And But he gave him this, this, this hell of a deal. He was like, I'm not gonna send you. I sent your dad, I sent your uncles, and look at what how they turned out. And I don't want to, I'm gonna give you this one opportunity, somebody else can send you. If you mess this up, somebody else can send you. This is the craziest shit, man. This is five phone calls since I've been recording this video. Anyways, um, when he was gonna go home, he came up to me and he's like, look, Holmes, he goes, I know you're looking at a lot of time, just like I was. And he pulled out, he had a, he had a little green, it was a long, long, it was like this, a New Testament. And he goes, read this. He said, man, I never told him, but he goes, I would read this thing every day, man, and I would ask for another chance. And he goes, this book got me out. I told him that you should keep it. He goes, no, you take it and you read it. And I'm going to say I kept it, but I wasn't as dedicated to him as he was. Did he get out and go straight and all that? No, he didn't. He's a youngster, right? But I had that and... Um, I paroled from YA with it. I went all through YA with it and everything, right? And I always, because I heard that thing. I don't remember if it's three chapters or three, I think it's three chapters. If you read three chapters a day from the Bible, you're supposed to be able to finish in 365 days. I believe that's that's what it is, right? And I used to always say, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read the Bible. I want to read it from front to back. You know, the Old Testament is so hard to read, man. And I said, I'm going to do one of these things. And I never, ever did it, right? I just always used to say, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And I would get to reading the Old Testament, and I would get so burnt out. I'd be like, man, how do people do this? And I know that it was probably a year and a half before I wound up getting out, right? I was sitting on my bunk, and... I had a Bible, a really nice Bible somebody had gave me. Was somebody's wife had actually sent it for me, right? And um, I remember looking at it and thinking, man, I still want to read that thing. I want to finish it, right? And, I, and I, I swear to God, I heard a voice clear as day as if he was standing right next to me saying, if you finish that book in one year, you're going to go home. I picked up the Bible. I started reading it on my time, right? And I did that. And I finished it. And I came home. You know, I don't talk about my relationship with God. I didn't hide behind the Bible in prison, you know. But I had... A very personal relationship with God. I still do. Um, every morning I like to. Um, I like to turn the music down, music off or down all the way down in my car. And I have a conversation with them. And I make sure. And I don't have it every day. Unfortunately, when do we pray the most? When we need something. Right. And. But I try to make it a point every day. When I'm taking that drive to turn the music down and be thankful for the day, thankful for making it through another night and thankful for all the things in my life, the many blessings that I receive, my lady, my family, everything, everything I'm thankful for. And um, it always feels like a better day when I do that. Now, I know this video right here is not gonna get a lot of views, but I guarantee you the ones that need it are gonna see it. And like I said, when that man gave me that money and asked me to speak on something like this, I don't have a problem with it. I know to other people, they'd rather, you know, um, not have these conversations, even though it goes on within their heart. They're not willing to let it come out their mouth. Um, but I don't have a problem with it. You know, to each their own. Believe in what you want. Just be good people, man. Be safe. Be smart. And tell the ones you love that you love them, right? I'm out.